Hey, welcome to a foreigner in the Philippines. Well, it's a late night job. And I wanted to touch on something that uh, is similar to uh, a talk that I had uh, a few nights ago. And uh, because it wasn't uh, the usual kind of thing, or, or I don't know, maybe it was, uh, people were saying, uh, is this a joke? Um, have you been hitting those funny mushrooms again? Uh, what are you on, Terence? And other such uh, <laughs> such uh, comments of massive misunderstanding or failure to get it. The world is changing, and if you don't keep up with it, then you'll be left behind. But a lot of what we take for granted has been with us for many, many years. How long? For instance, how long have you been taking uh, flights from one country to, to another? Well, it's been a long time. Now, if I say, for those of you who said, Oh, are you on some strange stuff, uh, Terence? Uh, you're doing funny. If you remember, my talk was about how strange is our world. And it's even a little bit spooky. Well, I don't want to go over the same stuff, although I will end up doing it. Um, what I wanted to do was make a comment which might help all of those people. And there are a lot of people now who are commenting and in commenting are showing that certainly our channel's world is, if not full of people who are feeling a little on the lonely side, it certainly has its fair, more than fair share of people who really would like to meet the one, that person that they want to spend their life with. I don't believe that we're talking about people who are looking for the one, as they like to say it. In other words, that only one that they can ever be totally happy with, their twin flame, their, their other half that they have been, uh, I don't know, uh, surfing through the cosmos in search of. I'm not, and I'm not being facetious, although obviously I am. What can we do in order to find that one or one of the many ones that we have been associated with over time, over lifetimes, if you are a believer in reincarnation. It touches, doesn't it, on the fact that so many people get estranged from their family members, myself included. And it turns out that those of the blood in other words, your blood relatives, mother, father, sister, brother, son, daughter, need not necessarily be those, uh, what shall we say, those other halves that you really should be joined to in an ideal world or an ideal universe. So, now that you fully... Uh, realize that I'm I'm all weird again and been on the mushrooms let me tell you a phrase it's called psycho cybernetics now what is psycho cybernetics psycho cybernetics was written a long long time ago by a doctor who was gainfully employed as a talented plastic surgeon and he wasn't giving flat-chested women in California uh, size 38s. He wasn't doing that. He was gainfully employed reconstructing the damaged faces and more of men who were coming home from war. Uh, he obviously went on to doing sur uh, cosmetic surgery, but his... Uh, what he learned in all of that was very important and he he was responsible for the life of me. Once again, I can't remember the, 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 the name of this author as important as he was to me. 
But psycho-cybernetics was when he realized that in order to get where you want to be, you have to be willing to make mistakes. And the perfect example of this, the perfect way to illustrate this, is to think about when you get on a plane. So, when we get on a plane, what happens? Well, the pilot and uh, the engineer, so uh, they take off, they handle they handle the, uh, the takeoff perfectly. There's all kinds of controls, all kinds of checklists that they must go through. And they have incredible training, incredible skill, and they get off the ground in that huge, huge machine, which is so much heavier than air. And that at one time, uh, a few hundred years ago, it would have been impossible. So they get off the, the ground. Uh, now, let's say that you're you're leaving, well, I'll bring it home. Let's say that you're leaving from Cebu or Manila and you're going to Los Angeles. Let's say that you're going to London. How do they know where the hell they're going? Well, of course, we all know that they have instruments and take uh, headings. We've all heard captains in, uh, in boats. We've all heard them say, on a heading of... Uh, you know, you know what I mean. And then the man at the wheel, whatever form that takes, actually does something and he puts it on a certain heading. So if you're at sea, it's the same as if you're in the air. You're heading out into a vast area. How, how do you find your way? It's not like you can say, well, you turn left at the, uh, at, at the pig and whistle, is it? And, and then right at the next junction and then straight through the traffic. You can't do that. Well, how do you do it? Well, that's what our friend, the doctor of psycho found out. You go on autopilot. So our pilot does no more than switch over to driving on ins instruments. He is flying on instruments. It's called autopilot. He no longer thinks about where he's going. So now we've handed over to the computer and the computer somehow knows where it's going. How does it do it? Well, the way that it does it can be a lesson to us because what the computer does when it goes on autopilot is it takes a heading. Right, so here's the heading, okay? It keeps going straight until here. If we look at it's it's actually heading here. Let's say it's heading here. What can we say? What can we look? What can we do? We'll say that the heading is here and this this is the destination. Now it will keep, this destination is, is way up here. So it, it heads onto in a straight line until it realizes that it's no longer actually heading towards the place that it should be, its destination. So it heads that way until it's going wrong, willingly makes a mistake, and then it adjusts back again. So now we're heading in the right place again until it's not heading there anymore. So it changes again. In other words, it willingly does mistakes until it finds out that it's a mistake and then it simply corrects itself. It doesn't go, it doesn't do in computer speak. Oh my God, oh my God, I don't have a mistake. It doesn't do that. It simply heads out until it's no longer the right way and then it corrects it. Does it correct it so that it will never have to correct it again? No, it doesn't. It then heads in a straight line until that's no longer taking it towards. So, in other words, it's continually correcting itself. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. And it gets you there. And then, of course, when the airfield is in sight, even though it can... <laughs> 
probably nowadays they can still they can even land on on autopilot how would I know but the pilot then takes over and lands the aircraft when the boat when the ship goes out on a heading and it finds that the heading is no longer correct it corrects itself so cyber psycho cybernetics is a self serving mechanism self seeking mechanism which you can employ if you are thinking about any kind of goal no matter what the goal is whether it's learning to play the guitar or finding your loved one and I believe that you can use this so what do you do the first thing to do is to set in your mind that there is something that you want to do to be some place that you want to be at to find and then you set your goal you set it so that you know now that you are on the way how do you know where to find that person well you don't so do you give up do you say well I know that I want to meet uh, a certain kind of person who is kind and loving and uh, generous and, and faithful um, and will love me for what I am and all of those things you you've actually created a picture of your destination now the trick now is or the challenge now is how to find that and how do you do that once you have set the goal once you have said this is what I want to be to do to find to travel to then you simply start doing what you have to to get there now this goes on to another kind of uh, thinking which I think they used to call lateral thinking so what does that mean well if you're going to find out how you should at least start then you have to visualize your destination let's say that old thing of how how do you go how do you uh, how do you go to China well you put one foot in front of the other that's what you do so let's say that you want to go to Beijing you want to go and see the Great Wall of China so you're going to head for Beijing how are you going to do that how will you possibly go to China well what you do is you think backwards and you imagine yourself getting off the plane in Beijing so hey here I am this is amazing I'm in Beijing next thing I'll be looking I'll be walking along the Great Wall of China isn't that great well yes it's the Great Wall of China now you ask yourself very simply on paper you write down here I am Great Wall of China what did I do last I got off the plane what do I do what did I do before that well I had one of those lousy airline meals and before that I went to the toilet I'm being facetious it's a joke now what you have to do is to trace retrace your steps back you got off the you got off the plane in Beijing you got on the plane in Cebu how did you get on the plane well you took a taxi to the airport from home what was before before that well um, I just received on the computer my airplane ticket and what was it before that well um, evidently I must have paid for the ticket and what did you do before that well see it might trace back to you did all kinds of huge things you saved for um, 12 months how did you save for 12 months well I did uh, I did that job um, cleaning out the office for uh, the staff um, then I was responsible for finding coffee and then I brought in uh, food from the takeout and I was paid for that uh, I saved my money instead of going to McDonald's or instead of going and you recount all of the steps that led you to be able to pay for the ticket now when you paid for the ticket what did you have to do well, I had to organize it with my boss that I could take away that I could take off two weeks 
two weeks vacation. Now, in the end, you will arrive back at, I had the thought that I would like to see the Great Wall of China. That was, that was your first thing that you did. Now everything else was psycho-cybernetics. Everything else was autopilot. Everything else was looking, let me get something that's thinner, that is like a line. Heading out there, correcting it. Heading on, correcting it. Heading on, correcting it. And you did that until you found your way. Now, if you do this, what you do to confirm it is you take those steps back again to China. So, you do the jobs, you bring the coffee, you get the meals, you take an extra job, you cut somebody's lawn, um, you don't go to McDonald's, you go somewhere else and have just a cup of coffee or you take uh, sandwiches. Uh, and then you end up, you're paying for the ticket, and you pay for the ticket. and So, you go that way, and then you come back and go this way. And then you go back and go that way, and you come back and go this way. And in the end, you will find those glitches that would not be on the path of your autopilot. And you will find what you need, what you want, what you wish for what you have chosen. It's a, it's a way of making something happen. It's not just the secret where you go, uh, China. <coughs> Is it here yet? No, it's not that. It's a, it's a way of arriving at your goals. I mean, if you want to, what was the old, old joke? The man, the man who was uh, on his way to Carnegie Hall and there's a busker by the, the road and he doesn't know how to get his way. So he says to the busker, a guitar player or singer, uh, excuse me, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? And the guy says to him, practice, son, practice. So you need to just have an idea of what you want. Now, here's another thing that you can try in finding what you want. You just look for the next person who can help you. Now, what they say is, what's, what's generally accepted in the pursuit of finding a contact that will help you is that you will talk to six, on average, six people before you find the one that you want. So, you want to find somebody who will come and fit your windows. You talk to someone who uh, does plumbing. Uh, hey, um, I'm looking for someone to do my windows. Uh, now, um, I'm working with somebody that um, that was mentioning something about windows. Uh, really, what's his name? Well, it, it was Harry. You're getting in touch with Harry. No, no, no. I was. I don't know anything about windows. What I do know about is a, a guy that does electrics, and you get the guy's number. And six people later you will hear, yes, I do windows. So I hope that this gives you an idea about how you can change the way that your life is going by going on autopilot using psycho-cybernetics, realizing that the making of mistakes is not something which is to be abhorred. Making of mistakes means that you will finally get there. As long as you don't get brought down because you're making mistakes. It's a, a thing that happens. When I was learning the, the trombone to be a musician, every day I'd get my trombone out and I'd make thousands of mistakes. I'd play thousands of notes that were not right. And finally, the bad notes dropped away and I became let me let me not make any uh, great uh, claims, but I became proficient. So, here's one other thing that you might take into consideration. If I said to you, all that you have to do 
in order to reach your goal is make 4,000 telephone calls. 4,000. By the way, this is God speaking. God has called you up on the phone as if he would need to. But he's called you up on the phone and he said, look, son, daughter, all you have to do is make 4,000 calls and I will guarantee with all my power that you will succeed. How would you approach the first call? Hey, let's get the first call done. First, second, third, fourth, five. And you just do it. And when you got to 3,999, you'd say, yes. So it's more that you eliminate the unknown than it is that you refuse to do the work that's needed. If you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, if you can see where you're going, if you can see your bright light ahead, you would do it. And you would do it without any hesitation. Say, hey, 4,000? Wow, God, that sounds a lot. But hey, if I know that after 4,000 I'm going to be there, I'll do it. So, it probably isn't anything like 4,000, by the way. But I understand that Colonel Saunders, before he finally got someone to take his recipe, he made something like 7,000 calls before they accepted it. Did you know that the Beatles were turned down by every recording company before they finally got a deal? Did you know that the great song, My Way, was actually turned down? That so many people suffered incredible disappointments and rejections before they finally made it, but they didn't give up. So, what are you waiting for? If it's your loved one you're looking for, head out. Do something. It will work out as long as you don't quit. This is a foreigner in the Philippines. If you think this would help somebody, then you can share. You can like, comment, subscribe. We're looking for the next thousand subscribers. We've actually hit and passed 33,000. Before Christmas, my goal, my hope, my wish back then was if we could just, I said to Beth, if we, wouldn't it be great if we could hit 10,000 by Christmas? Here we are at 33,000. Our goal, why? What do they say about setting goals? It takes no more energy to set a big goal than to set a small goal. So we're hoping to have 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Can you help us please? I'm sure you can. It's a way in which you could support whatever good you think that we're doing. Eventually we will overcome the difficulties about being non-profit and if we don't when we reach a hundred thousand we'll fund our own projects to hell with it thanks for looking in please like comment subscribe 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 bye for now